Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's me again. So I'm about to start working on the um, last cup for one of my grandchildren. And I didn't, I don't think when I recorded the last time, I don't believe I started off right with this. So, I'm gonna start off showing you guys how to do it. Hope everybody is having a blessed evening. We have some storming here in, uh, I guess I'll say Atlanta. The weather just turned very quickly. I was on my way to Sam's Club to return something and <laughs> the storm just, the wind just started blowing, the sky got black, I, yeah, I turned my vehicle right around and came right on back to this juke joint because I was not trying to be caught out there. So I'm just using the tape just to place it just to um, hold it in place, right? Kind of mark where I want it to be. And I'm telling you, this is like only the third glass I've done like this. And I promise you, I'm no pro. <laughs> I saw uh, another crafter do this and I thought it was beautiful. Showed it to my grandbabies and well, they saw another glass that I was doing and they wanted one. So I decided to do this one for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. This is stressful. And I usually do this just to um, kind of relax, <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. This part here is a little bit stressful. All right, I hope that holds that tape back there. And I'll put a little glue. I should have probably trimmed these zippers a little more, but I decided I was gonna leave a little bit more um, zipper on this time. Come on, glue. I figured I'd leave a little bit more zipper on. Mm -hmm. Don't pull it away. So this is what you don't want to do. Get this sticky glue above the zipper portion. You want that part to stay as neat and as clean as possible. Although, 
I'm going to try to put something above it. Put some stones above it. All right. All right. should have been cut a little bit longer and it was and I shaved it a little bit I might have shaved off a little bit too much but we're gonna make it work oh no can't make it work like that now I might have to cut me another piece Thank goodness I have a little bit more zip, all right? cut this thing too short again oh my lord and I cut it longer <laughs> hmm, here we go let's try this piece um, this is gonna be now this is too long to cut it a little bit more, but I'm not going to. All right. I'd rather it be a little too long. Maybe I can glue it down again. I don't know. But I'm getting glue all over my hands. All right. Oh, it's storming, y'all. It's that thunder again. All right, I did it all right. You gotta be patient and have some patience to do this until you, you know, do as many, do enough glasses to actually get you um, comfortable.
the glue off of my fingers. And now I have to do the back part of the glass. So my grandbaby was upset that I did the other two grandbaby's glasses first. Made the comment when they told her that I had done theirs and, and they showed her their glasses. She said it figures they would do, she would do yours first because you're her favorite. And that is so far from the truth. I don't have any favorites. I have 13 grandchildren and I don't have any favorites. So they were going to go to California. They were getting ready to go to California last weekend. That was gonna be um, their last weekend here. And I didn't wanna to have to mail the glasses. So when I found out they were here in Atlanta, I went on ahead and finished theirs up so that I could take it to them while they were here. And, um, and they can just travel with them. So I did not want to mail them because I did not want to hear, oh, when they arrived, they were broken, <laughs> right? I wrapped them up really good, put them in a thick shoe box that I had and Made sure I had enough padding so they could take them with them. My daddy might have had to pay <laughs> some extra. <laughs> I don't know. He probably, they probably travel light because I'm sure he has plenty of clothing there with him for them. Uh -uh. Okay, so see, it's kind of overlapping now since I um I want to make sure I didn't cut it too short. and leave it like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Finally, got done with that part. Clean this up. Close it up. to clean up my container for my Mod Pod. Okay, so I'm back. I actually should have probably told you guys all what I'm using. <laughs> These zippers, I ordered a bunch of white zippers um, off of Amazon. And um, they were fairly inexpensive. And so what I'm doing is I'm just measuring the glass, I'm cutting the tips of the zippers off so that I can actually take the zipper itself off. And this one is probably one that I had extra. I had, um, had left over from one of the other glasses that I did. So they come like this. Right. And this part has a zipper on it. And it has this piece at the bottom. As well as up here, you know, to keep the zipper from coming off. And so I'll just cut these off. Cut these off. You can trim this if you like. 
in the video I saw she trimmed it, but it just left so many strings. And I didn't want to be dealing with that. I did do it with the first two glasses that I made, but I'm going to try it this way this time and huh, see how it works out. Um, and I think I got a, oh, I can't even remember. I'll let you know. As a matter of fact, let me, I'll do it right now. Um, and tell you what I ordered. My Wi-Fi moving a little slow because we had a storm today. But um, trying to go through and see. Why don't I see the zippers? And I know I ordered them from Amazon. Um, let's go back. It really wasn't that long ago. Hmm. Okay, so they were nylon zippers for sewing. I ordered them in bulk. They were eleven dollars. These are fourteen inch zippers. Hmm. I'm trying to remember how many was in here. It's crazy because I don't see how many is in here, but it's a whole pack. It's quite a few. And it's not coming up in my order, um, in my recent orders. And I know that I just purchased them. But can you see? Looks like that. And I know it's probably backwards because I need to, I guess, mirror this. But, um,. It's like, child, look like I probably got about 20 to, to 40 zippers. I'm not understanding why this doesn't say how many. It just says bulk, 14 inch zippers. But um, it was a bunch of them. So I figure I'll just show you. <laughs> That's a lot of zippers. I don't understand why it didn't say how many was in it, but this got to be about 50 zippers in here for $11 and change. What was it? $11.99? So. I'm hoping the lights don't go off while I'm doing this. Cause it's been storming on and off for the last couple of hours. My grandbaby wants blue, so I got um blue glitter. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know. Got a tickle in my throat. And I love this blue. My other granddaughter wanted blue as well. And um, the blue, it gives great coverage. I need to look and see what it is, what kind of blue. I think it's fine. Got it from, um, I actually got the, this glitter from Michael. And they actually had a sale going on. Oh, put it up a little bit higher than I wanted to, but that's all right. Mm. 
This is the blue glitter. It's so beautiful. Let's see if I can. It's marine blue, marine. Marine blue, marine recollections. And I got them from Sam's. I mean, not Sam's, Lord Michaels. <laughs> I said Sam's. All right. So I'm going to have to do another coat, but I like, I like, I like. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour, maybe two, and I'll come back and do another coat. Um, these are the glasses I was working on for another client, but guess what? I don't know if I'm gonna get to give it to them because things happen in the real estate realm where Sometimes we don't make it to the closing table, right? And prayerfully, we'll get there. And it's not that they don't qualify or anything like that. It was a particular program they were trying to get into. And um, the buyers actually made too much money for this <laughs> down payment assistance program. But you know, listen, if you can get it, get it, right? Um, just because we make good money doesn't always mean we're in a position to save, right? Things happen in life, and, and so that's really kind of um, 
how it went down. So those things happen. This is actually was supposed to be for the woman. And, and hey, they're not the last clients. You know, God willing that I'm going to have another couple and I'll be able to give this to them. But prayerfully, we'll get everything worked out and I'll finish it because the only thing I'm really waiting on, um, I decided I was going to leave the bottom like this because I love it like that. But what I was going to do is put their name across here and frost the rest of the glass, um, etch it with some, you know, frost it with some etching cream. And I was excited to do that and show it to you because it would be my first time etching like such a large space on the glass. Um, but I'm going to do it and I might just also etch the bottom and leave this part clear. I'm not sure, but I'll figure it out. And I'm thinking I may add some pearls to this little area here as it goes across, but I think I might etch it first. And I probably should have waited before I put this on, but you know, uh, I'm gonna wait and etch the bottom first. Etch it first before I put the pearls across the bottom. And I'm also gonna do the same thing with the rhinestones. This was for the husband. And put some rhinestones across the bottom here and um yeah or should i leave it like that but i think i'm gonna etch it um i'm gonna put rhinestones so i can etch it too what you think i like them all right well we're gonna let these this particular glass do its thing for about an hour or so, and then I'll come back and finish. Okay, so I'm back, and guess what, y'all? I had an important call I had to take, and so I finished the glass. Not really, I need to do one more coat on the stem and the base, but I did a second coat. It's so beautiful. I love this blue. I didn't clean it up yet, but I did a second coat off camera. So sorry. And once I clean it up, hopefully this is gonna be even because I did my best to try to even it all out. So, um, and then I'll do another base coat um, for the base and the stem. Yeah, because I could tell the difference with that. And then I'll finish it up. So I'm going to try to um, add the stones and the pearls. This is the glass. The last one I did, um, my grandbabies, each one of them chose pearl and the other chose rhinestone. So I said on this one, I'm just going to do a mixture of pearls and rhinestones, every other one, and hopefully it'll come out looking like gold, <laughs> otherwise, I don't know. And so I got these too, and I might have already said so, but I got this from Amazon as well. And then once again, I would have to go and see. I think that was like 9,500 pieces. Um, I, I believe 9,500 pieces of flat back pearls. And let's see. Yeah, no, actually, those that was 11,070 pieces of flat back pearls. And let me do buy again. I paid $9.99. Mm -hmm. And it actually came with a tweezer. Let's see. So, 
And I also got the rhinestones. It was two packs of these different sizes. Um, and these also had eight different sizes of the flat back pearls. But the um, rhinestones, let me see what I paid for those. And how many came in there. So that was 5,040 pieces of clear rhinestone. And I believe I paid like $7.99. I'll probably pay $8.99 for them. And now they have them with 11% off Amazon. And they actually came with a tweezing tool as well. And then I got this from Amazon as well. This is a tweezer and it's also the tool that you use. And look, don't give me the line because I can't even remember what all this stuff is called. But um, <laughs> I watch YouTube videos just like you watching right now to figure out what I needed. And I just went on Amazon and different places to try to get the um, best buy, the best you know, price I could and still have some decent quality. I don't remember, I can't find this in my list. Here we go with this nonsense. But it's uh, Vikira. Vikira, V-I-K-E-R-E-R. -E -E -R. And it came with two um, of the wands that you use to put the stones on and a tweezer in the middle. And I have so many of these that I don't even bother. I haven't even bothered to use this one. But um, the tweezers pretty, I mean, the um, pickup tool is pretty good. And I don't understand why, though, the things that I purchase are not coming up in my list of purchases. My, oh, this is it. I'm sorry. It is the, they might not, it just doesn't have an image anymore. Vikira or Vikira two-pack rhinestone picker and it doesn't even it doesn't even give me the option to buy it again it says uh oh something went wrong so I don't know if they even sell this one anymore but let me show you so I use liquid fusion I like this glue you got to be careful not to use a whole lot because it will slide around until it dries but it dries wonderfully. And um, I use this to put my stones on. I just kind of lace, line, you know, run it around the edges of the glass. And also I try to put a little bit of it towards the end too. Like, when I'm putting the glue in, I try to put a little bit down here so that it'll help to secure the zipper as well. Um, when I put it in, I try to... And I do have some other tools, like, to put the glue on. that um I don't know what they call but you know I could put the little skinny pieces on here to put it on a little better but I don't bother okay and so what I do is and I'm sorry my hand is in the way because I should not have done the bottom part of this glass <laughs> so let me turn it around like this and show you how I put the glue
I'm hoping that's gonna look all right, huh? I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. The last time I did this, I actually used smaller um, pearls. Hmm, maybe I need to try that. See if I add a blue pearl to it. My blue pearls are so small, I really don't want to use them. I think I'm going to just replace this one. It might make it look a little better. Hmm. I'm going to put a larger one there. I think that's better to put a bigger stone in the middle. And I don't know if you can even really see it. Put a bigger pearl in the middle. All right, so. All right, so how about I do something a little different? Talk about real estate transactions. I'm tired and I can't really think right now, but how many of you out there are interested in purchasing a home? But you feel like the interest rates are too high and um, you don't think you can afford your monthly payments or you can't save any money for your down payment. So I'm in the state of Georgia. I'm also licensed in the state of Florida. Uh, I don't do too much in Florida. I'm debating if I'm even going to keep that license. <laughs> but um, I say rental rates are high as well. And they're not coming down. Right? And they go up at the end of every lease. Some landlords go up reasonably and some <laughs> just act like they have lost their minds, right? And those normally are the landlords that don't want to do anything to the property, don't want to fix it up. 
And, and let me not even say that because guys, what you need to also think about is when you lease from a landlord, right? Nine times out of 10 in today's world, we are not leasing from landlords directly. You're leasing from property management companies that represent the landlords. And I promise you, nine times out of 10, those property managers are not even informing these landlords sometimes about all of the problems with the houses. And not all of them, but some of them. Some of them just collect that rent and collect their fee out of that rent and keep it moving. And you sitting in the house complaining and crying about the condition of the property, the fact that they don't come fix anything when it breaks. And even if these things are normal wear and tear and not things that you should be responsible for, right? Some of these land, some of the um, property management companies, they do whatever. They don't even inform a lot of times the landlord about your issues. Like I had a client who, um, <laughs> in a way, I'm mad at myself, but you know, I'm a helper. And so I like to help. And while we're looking for houses, they're complaining about how they have to get out of this rental property because this landlord won't fix anything. They've been reaching to, out to the property management company. They've been complaining. Um, there was a bad leak and they didn't fix the leak properly. Um, and although they got the leak stopped, there was still mold in the house and just all these things going on. And these people have children and mold is dangerous, right? So I recall them telling me one time when we were speaking that they actually had direct access to their landlord. They knew the landlord's contact information. They knew his phone number and everything. So after speaking with them a couple of times or listening to them, I was like, hey, didn't you tell me you have your landlord's contact information? They said, yeah, but you know, we go through the property management. I said, girl, the property management is not working out for you. And you are one of the few blessed people to have direct access to your landlord via his cell phone. I need you to call the landlord because your landlord, especially knowing that he knows you and that knowing that you guys have direct access to him, he doesn't know what's going on in this house. If you call him, I bet you get those things fixed. And sure enough, they called. And it seemed like from that point on, <laughs> they stopped looking for a house. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. I was a little pissed off about that. But, I mean, they'll look again next year. They, we really wasn't finding anything um, in their price point and area mostly to accommodate their family. Um, and really because they um, have a special needs child and they need to stay in a certain area. They can't really stray from that area. And so when you limit your options, when you're looking for a home and you limit your options um, for whatever reason, you know, and they have a valid reason for limiting their options, right? But when you have to make that decision, it really affects what you're going to find um, because it's difficult to find what you need when your options are uh, limited. So with that being said, they've taken a break because it, it's, it can be exhausting. I'm not gonna lie. It can be very exhausting trying to find a property um, and going under contract. And you guys, you, you look for a house. You go on the contract and then you have to get your inspection. 
And sometimes that process doesn't work out. There might be a ton of things going on with the house. It could just be one thing that's wrong with the property, right? But if that landlord, I mean, sorry, if that seller doesn't want to make that repair and you decide you don't want to take that responsibility on when you purchase the property and you might have to start your whole process all over again. And an inspection is, you know, anywhere from like 425, 450, depending on who you use and where you're located. Um, and more. So, the first thing most people should do, I think, when you purchase a home, your first steps should be one, yes, you can find a realtor that you trust that's going to help you through the process. Um, and let's say you go that route first. When the realtor directs you to a lender, prior to ever showing you a property. Trust and believe that is the process. Oh no, my night vision came on, hold on. Okay. So, that's the process, y'all. The first step really is to get approved for a loan because you need to know how much home you can afford. You don't want to be out there looking at houses and $450,000 homes, right? And then find out you can only get qualified for, let's say 400. Even a small amount of a difference like that, 450 to, to 400, 425 even sometimes to 400 can make a big difference in what a house looks like, the condition of a home, honestly. And so it's best to know what you qualify for before you go looking at houses and if you qualify at all. Once you get qualified, then, and that's fully pre-approved, once you get approved by your lender, then your agent will be happy to take you out looking at homes. And sometimes your, your agent's going to charge you guys an upfront fee, right? A retainer fee. And honestly, you know, a lot of people feel like real estate agents they're not supposed to pay them, but that's not the case. All right, a lot of agents charge a fee, and I'm one of them. And I, I tell you, we charge that fee not because we want that money, because we, we don't want that money. We want to close. And the problem is, we also want you to be loyal. We don't mind working, we don't mind working hard. But nobody wants to work hard and get nothing. I want you guys to think about it like this. You get a job, you get hired at this job, and they tell you, we're gonna take a chance on you, but we're gonna put you on a, oh, excuse me, 30-day probationary period, right? I'm moving the camera all over the place. So, you on that 30-day probationary period, and at the end of your probationary period, your employer comes to you and says, hey, we really appreciate all the work you did. We appreciate it. However, we don't feel like you're a good fit. And by the way, we're not going to be paying you for the last 30 days. How would you feel? And that's exactly what it's like sometimes being a real estate agent. You work with somebody for months and months and months. And they get frustrated with the process. And decide they don't want to buy. 
anymore. And they walk away. So you work for three months, your car, wear and tear, gas, time away from home, um, giving much valuable information, and the person just gives up and quits. I want to stop that. And um, when they give up and quit, you walk away empty handed. And I guess they feel that's fair. They're empty-handed, they didn't get a house, so you shouldn't get paid. But that's not the way it should work, guys. Not at all. Because we did work. We worked hard and gave you much valuable information. All right, we had to pay in order to get this knowledge and we had to work hard to get that knowledge. So you hired us because you needed assistance in that area, right? With the things you didn't know. But if an attorney said to you, yes, you know, I can take your case, but I'm gonna charge you, I don't know, $5,000. Now I'm not gonna guarantee you that I can get you off, but it's gonna cost $5,000 for me to just show up in court. You gonna show up in court without an attorney? Or are you gonna pay that attorney? Most people gonna pay that attorney, especially if they can really afford to do it. They are gonna pay that attorney that $5,000, right? So, with that being said, when your attorney, when your um, realtor charges you a small fee, I charge a fee, nine times out of 10, I make the fee refundable at the closing table. Um, sometimes I don't, it just depends on if it's a repeat person that I didn't charge in the past, um, then I'll make the fee non-refundable. And so, once you get approved through a lender, you go looking at houses, you find the house that you like, your agent will write the contract for you, explain everything to you. There's some money that you guys need to have, upfront money. You need to have some earnest money. You need to have inspection money and appraisal money. And here in the state of Georgia, earnest money is money that is given by the buyer to the seller in consideration for that seller taking their home off the market and allowing you to do diligence to determine whether or not you're going to move forward with purchasing the home. But really, it's good faith money that you're going to go on ahead and do what you need to do and you're going to do it in a timely manner because time is of the essence. So you have the diligence period here. Depending on how the market is going, your diligence period could be anywhere from four to seven days. Right? And after that, during that time, you're going to get an inspection. And the earnest money, excuse me, is generally one to two percent of the sales price of a home. Right? So if the house is two thousand two hundred thousand dollars, then you're going to give up two um, two thousand dollars in earnest money. Sometimes on a $200,000 home, you might be able to get, get away with giving $1,000, right? Generally, it's 1%, but it can be 2%. So once you've given that earnest money, and the earnest money is generally um, due within three days, of you going on the contract. So, um, then during that time, you're going to do an inspection. Yeah. 
And when you do your inspection, you have your diligence period to determine whether or not you're going to move forward. <sighs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm getting tired of it. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not thinking clearly because I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. This usually works out for me. I think I'm gonna have to slide these things in the other direction because you see, it's not um, it's not matching up the way it should because I I put a larger um <sighs> pearl in the middle. So it looks like I'm gonna have to move all of these stones down just so if I have to put a bigger pearl in the back, I can do that. Um, and I need to move them before they dry. been lucky <laughs> doing this I've not had to do this before like change out uh, move these pearls and stuff like this I haven't had to do this in the past so we done got off of real estate stuff because um, I'm trying to concentrate on getting this glass together Mm -mm. I'm about to have to turn this camera off so I can fix this up. And um, anyway, let's 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 go back. So I was talking about um, earnest money. So you give up your earnest money, and um, within three days of going under contract two to three days whatever it is you guys agreed upon right i generally try to get i have a great inspector and so i'm sorry <laughs> i have a great inspector so i try my best um to get the inspection done during you know before the earnest money is required and most of the time Sometimes he can't, but most of the time he can fit me in like the next day. So when you work with somebody often and, um, Lord have mercy. When you work with someone often, they will do what they can. They are very loyal to you and do what they can to, um, get you what you need done in a timely manner. So, my inspector's great, sometimes too good. 
I feel like the Lord, we are we ever gonna get under contract because he's so good, he finds everything. Yeah, some people don't like it. Sellers be like, what? But yeah, if it if it's something wrong or that needs to be addressed, he is definitely gonna find it. the back and so you get your inspection done if there's anything that needs to be addressed any concerns that need to be addressed um, we do what's called an amendment to address concerns we ask the seller to address those concerns to repair them maybe you know if it's not such a bad um, thing that needs to be done not not something that's really big then um, sometimes you know you can get a, a credit for whatever the item is that you want taken care of. Um, you can do that as well. And then once you get past that part of the transaction, you, um, you move on and get your appraisal. So you can get your appraisal and um, once you get that appraisal, you just wait to see what the value of the house is. That appraisal tells you the value of the house. The inspection tells you the condition of the house. And sometimes the appraisal will see something that needs to be done too and they will require a, um, an, a repair be made as well. And if a, an appraiser requires an, a repair, you absolutely have to have that repair made before you can close. And that appraiser has to go back out to the property and look at that repair and make sure it was actually complete. All right. So once we get the appraisal back, if it appraises, great, we move forward. If it does not, then we have to ask the seller to reduce the sales price. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. And if you're using an FHA loan, which is a government subsidized loan, if you're utilizing one of those, then that appraisal follows the house for 120 days. That means even if this deal does not work out, if that seller has to get another offer, they cannot sell to anyone using an FHA appraisal for another 100 and they can't get another appraisal for 121 days. Now they can accept an offer. They have to sell the house at that appraised value unless somebody's buying with cash or if they're using a conventional loan, then they can get a whole new appraisal. All right. And your file goes into underwriting with the lender and prayerfully they update your, you update your pay stubs, your bank statements. You're going to need two years W-2. So you need to be able to prove you've worked for two, the last two years in a row using your tax returns, your W-2s. You're also going to need 30 days worth of pay stubs, and you're going to need um, two months worth of bank statements, and that's with an FHA loan. 
conventional as well. When you doing in um, different types of loans may require a few more bank statements. It just depends on the product that you're using. But most people use conventional or um, FHA. And I'm not a lender, so I don't want to go into <laughs> um, different loan products. Um, not in depth anyway. So I'm going to go on ahead and finish this portion. I'm going to do this again. Get off some of the excess. It's been sitting long enough while I um while I put the pearls and stuff on. Pearls and mine stones. So. I probably should have showed you that I finished it, but I gotta clean it up, but there we go. And yeah, I put a big pearl in the back too, just to take up that space. There we go. I was thinking I probably should have used a rhinestone instead of the pearl in the back, but it's done, it is done. Okay. I'm trying to make it, you know, as smooth as you can. You don't want to leave clumps. I'm going to have to start using a different um, sponge because I'm noticing that I'm gonna have to pick some of these, just like little pieces of the sponge are starting to come off on to the glass and I'm gonna have to pull those pieces out. See? I'm sorry, I have to remember to keep this in the camera's view. It's funny because I have it on a tripod that will follow my face, right? But I don't use it for that. <laughs> I use it for this because I don't 
often put my face on camera. I don't know why. I never really liked being on camera and I never liked taking pictures. You might say you can't tell from my Facebook page and stuff, but <laughs> I had to start getting comfortable with it because I am a real time in business. So, you know, we have to sometimes go outside of our comfort zones. And I have definitely had to do that. Look, y'all about to see how I, um, oh, it didn't do too bad. Uh oh, I had it and let it go. There we go. Alright. Okay. So let me try to clean this up. See if any of my stones fall off. <laughs> Looks like I do need to try and line it up just one more again. I messed the back up just a tad bit when I was on. Um, put some extra glue on here. See if I can use a tweezer and try to get some of this out of here. Feel like I need a wire brush sometimes just to um get some of this stuff out of the zipper. So I might have to go back across this thing here. I don't know if I really want to use this to do it because it's falling apart, but... So that delayed me from being able to put the zipper on it. So.
And I'm sorry if I'm taking this out of the view of the camera. Um, just really trying to get this line as seamless and uh, straight as possible. And I think I might have messed it up right there again. But whatever. Okay. I think that's much better. Alright. Just gotta wait a little while. Mm mm. Dry. Okay, so I'm going to bed, y'all. I'm tired. I don't even know where I ended talking real estate talk, but I'm going to do better next time. How about that? <laughs> and if you actually have any questions that you might want to ask, 
and I'll be able to assist you with pertaining to real estate, feel free. Because we can crap and I'll answer some questions while I'm making some closing gifts or gifts for my grandchildren. All right. Well, you all have a wonderful night. It's only 11.37, not too bad. And I'm actually feeling like I could sleep tonight because I'm tired. <laughs> Clean this stuff up and get myself to bed. So you all have a wonderfully blessed night. Don't forget to talk to the Lord before you lay your head down. And don't just ask him for things. Thank him. Thank him because he brought you through this day. Because a lot of us didn't make it through this day. A lot of us didn't even live to see the day. But I tell you what, the ones that have, he has brought us through a whole lot. All right? So, make sure when you wake up in the morning, you say, good morning, Jesus. Thank you for breathing breath into my lungs. What would you have me to do today? Amen. You all have a good night. Love you.